I said in a previous video something about London buses. You spend ages waiting for one, and then two come along at exactly the same time. That's what DICE have done today in spilling some of the beans on upcoming content for the community test environment. The whole studio has been a bit quiet recently, as many of the DICE LA team were taking vacation time, and DICE Stockholm are now more focused on Star Wars Battlefront 2. But the LA team are back in the office, and they're ready to kick in some brand new content. Last night, an event was run on the community test environment with some of the DICE LA developers. One of them, called Indigold, or you might know as Yoye Dalund, he's a producer on Battlefield 1, he tweeted out before the playtest that any confirmed melee kills on him would result in one piece of information being revealed about the future of the CTE and the plan for what's being released and what's being tested over the next month or so. Trust DICE to be able to make a sport out of leaking information. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't take part in this community test, but the community did confirm three melee kills on Indigold, and that led him to revealing the following information. His first tweet was, We will release unique dog tags that can only be obtained via playing on the CTE. There are several levels, and current stats will be saved. No ETA on this. He then further clarified with these dog tags that there will be six of them, and to earn the highest level dog tag, you'll need to spend some serious time and dedication to the CTE. And then this was followed by, if our intended plan holds up, expect to test new maps very soon on the CTE. Don't make any weekend plans. Quite the info scoop there. For those unfamiliar with the CTE specific dog tags, similar creations were added to the Battlefield 4 CTE when it was live, but there were only three stages to achieve at that point. They were named CTE Noob, CTE Advisor, and CTE Specialist, and they were all awarded to players who'd spent different levels of time on the CTE, helping out the DICE developers with testing new ideas, new prototypes, and I imagine that these dog tags for Battlefield 1 will be very similar. We already have a CTE veteran dog tag in Battlefield 1 that was awarded to players who'd registered time in the CTE for Battlefield 4 or Battlefield Hardline, and I guess these six brand new tags will join that one. Now, I can already see the comments from console players saying this is yet another PC-only thing, and I do hear your cries. It must be incredibly frustrating to still be waiting for access to the community test environment when you were told all the way back in March that it was coming soon. But I will repeat something that I've said in a previous video, I think it was back in March or April. This is something that DICE can't really control at this point. The PS4 and the Xbox One, those platforms are owned by Sony and Microsoft respectively, and they set the rules as to what can and cannot be allowed, and when new entries can be added to their systems. At the moment, it seems DICE is still waiting for these two companies to give the go-ahead. All appears to be ready on DICE's end, but they're at the mercy of these other companies, and it seems they're still having to wait. Indiegold actually alluded to this situation in another follow-up tweet to players complaining that these new dog tags would not be earned by console players. Considering they wanted the CTE live in March, I imagine the DICE developers are just as frustrated as you are that they still cannot deliver the CTE to consoles at the moment. They are going to deliver it, trust me, they will get there, but it looks like you may still have to wait a little bit longer. But now moving on to the bigger, juicier nugget that Indigo revealed as well. New map testing will be live on the CTE, hopefully, later on this week. We know the first map will be Lupcal Pass. I still don't know how to pronounce that word properly, uh, and I'm not going to attempt it until I'm confident on knowing how to pronounce it. That's the first map that will be tested. It's the sole map of the Russian DLC that's being released in August, one month ahead of of the rest of the maps, but he refers to maps as plural, not singular. It's likely then we will see other Russian DLC maps like Galicia and Brusilov Keep follow Lupkow Pass onto the CTE very soon for players to jump onto and test out. 
And I think we'll see a very similar distribution system to the French DLC, They Shall Not Pass. One map being live for a few days, and then it being swapped out with another one, keeping only one map live at any one time. I wouldn't be surprised as well if DICE decided to hold back a couple of the maps from being tested, and then keep some surprises for the full release. They Shall Not Pass testing missed out both of the operations, which is arguably some of the best content of the DLC, the Verdun Heights map, the brand new game mode Frontlines, and a few other things as well. So I'd expect something very similar for In the Name of the Tsar. And we still haven't got any real idea of how the operations will look for the DLC, apart from one of them focusing on the Brusilov Offensive. We've got the giant Muromets bomber that's still yet to be revealed properly. Several new weapons beyond the six Russian ones are still unknown. Various melee weapons, a new game mode called Supply Drop. We have very little detail surrounding that at the moment and the brand new progression system is still lacking detail. We don't really know what's coming there. So much, much more to come into this DLC, and I'm excited at just the thought of being able to test the first map, Lupcal Pass. As Indigo said, if you're available over the weekend, then the CTE should have a new map there for you to play. Exciting times ahead. If things get pushed back or the map doesn't come to the CTE this weekend, I will let you know, don't worry. And one last thing today, I wanted to show you this, it's totally unrelated to the rest of what I've just been speaking about, but I now have my very own mini tank hunter from Battlefield 1. This was made by a clever chap called Superhero, and I bumped into his Instagram a few months back whilst he was modelling the mini tank hunter, and he was kind enough to reserve me one so I could buy one. Super's been making these mini figurines in loads of different styles for quite a while, it seems. His Instagram is just full of different models, but he's now in the process of making a run of mini trench raiders. That's the elite class from the French DLC. You can see a finished one on the screen right now. It looks really, really awesome and actually very accurate considering how small he's managed to make it. Now, if you want to keep track of his progress, I've linked his Instagram down in the description. Plus, it's very likely soon he will release the Trench Raider for people to purchase if you want to go and buy one. These guys are extremely limited, however. I think only 30 tank hunters were made in total. So if you want to get a Trench Raider, then you best be quick when he announces they are for sale. I don't know when they are going up for sale, but... You might just want to keep track of it. It's a really cool piece of Battlefield fan art, memorabilia, whatever you want to call it. And it's really cool to have it sitting on my shelf next to my PC. Just something awesome from the community that I wanted to share. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm excited to get some gaming done on the new Russian DLC maps. Starting this week, hopefully, on the CTE. I'm hungry for new content in Battlefield 1. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. I'll be there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.